Indians have always had a complicated relationship with food. From centuries of lavish thalis to today's fast food culture, our plates have only grown heavier while our lives have become more sedentary. And the result is visible around us. India today is one of the top countries battling obesity and according to the ICMR, more than 135 million Indians are struggling with it. But here's the tricky part. When we talk of obesity, we usually point fingers at the belly. That round pot belly that so many people consider normal, especially in middle-aged men. And this has become almost like a cultural symbol. But what many of us don't know is that belly fat is not just about looks or tight clothes. There are two types of fat in the belly and one of them is more dangerous than the other. And this is where the story of belly fat and visceral fat begins. When people say belly fat, they usually mean the fat that bulges around the waist. This is called as the subcutaneous fat, the layer of fat just under the skin. You can pinch it, you can see it, and it often gets the most attention. Many of us associate it with overeating or lack of exercise, but it's not always that simple. Genetics, hormones, stress, and even lack of sleep can contribute to the buildup of fat in the belly. Now, here is an interesting cultural note. In India, especially in earlier generations, a big belly was considered a sign of prosperity. It was seen as proof that you were well-fed, successful and comfortable in life. But today, what was once celebrated is turning into a health disaster. A study in 2022 showed that more than 40% of urban Indian adults have abdominal obesity, meaning their waistlines are larger than the healthy standard. So belly fat is not just a cosmetic problem. It is the first red flag that something inside might be going wrong. And that brings us to the hidden enemy, visceral fat. Unlike the subcutaneous fat that sits just beneath the skin, visceral fat is buried deep inside your abdomen. It surrounds your vital organs like the liver, pancreas, and intestines. You cannot pinch it. You cannot always see it too. Even people who otherwise look slim can still have high levels of visceral fat. This is why some people are called tofi or thin outside, fat inside. Now, this visceral fat is dangerous because it is biologically active. It releases hormones and inflammatory chemicals that disrupt the normal functioning of your body. It can make your cells more resistant to insulin, hence increasing your blood sugar levels and also increasing your blood pressure. Research shows that Indians, as compared to Europeans, are more prone to accumulating visceral fat even at lower body weights. That means that a BMI of 23 for an Indian may already be as risky as a BMI of 27 for someone from a Western country. This fat does not just sit quietly. It actively fuels diseases like type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, heart attacks, and even certain cancers. No wonder doctors often call visceral fat as the ticking time bomb inside your body. And why are Indians more vulnerable? To understand why Indians in particular face this issue, we need to look at it from both history and lifestyle. Our ancestors lived lives of physical labor, which was either farming, walking long distance, and doing the household chores, for which now we have machines or people to do it. It meant that most of the food they ate was burned off. And fast forward to today, we still eat those calorie-rich foods like parathas, biryanis, fried snacks and sweets. But our activity levels have dropped drastically. The so-called Indian phenotype also plays a role. Studies have shown that South Asians tend to store more fat around the belly and have less muscle mass compared to Western populations. This makes us more likely to develop insulin resistance and visceral fat, even if we are not overweight by international standards. That's why in India, you see 
relatively slim people suddenly diagnosed with diabetes and heart disease. To put it in perspective, India is called the diabetes capital of the world. Over 77 million Indians are living with diabetes. And a large part of this epidemic is linked to visceral fat and central obesity. Unlike your subcutaneous belly fat, you cannot just look into the mirror to check your visceral fat. The easiest method is to measure your waist circumference. For Indian men, anything above 90 cm and for women, anything above 80 cm is a red flag. Even if your BMI is normal, a high waistline means you could have dangerous levels of visceral fat. Another way is through medical imaging like MRI or CT scans, but these are not practical for everyone. Of course, certain blood tests will show high amount of triglycerides, cholesterol levels, sugar levels, but they are indirect markers. But remember that getting an annual health checkup should not be a formality. It is actually like a window into your internal fat levels. But the good news is that visceral fat is not permanent. Unlike stubborn subcutaneous fat, Visceral fat responds well to lifestyle changes. And the first step is diet. Cutting down on the refined carbs and focusing on whole grains, pulses, fiber-rich vegetables, fruits, and increasing the protein levels are very important tools to keep your visceral fat under control. Exercise is another powerful weapon. Aerobic exercise like walking, cycling, and swimming also help burn visceral fat effectively. Strength training helps too because more muscle mass means better metabolism. Interestingly, studies show that even brisk walking for 30 minutes a day can reduce visceral fat in just a few months. Sleep and stress management also play a huge role. Poor sleep increases hunger hormones, making you eat more. And chronic stress raises cholesterol, which promotes fat storage around the belly. So never underestimate the power of a good night's sleep and some relaxation techniques like yoga or meditation. One mistake many people make is expecting overnight results, but the key is consistency. You can replace one sugary chai with green tea, take the stairs instead of the lift, or walk while talking on the phone. These small, repeated habits add up and gradually help melt away the visceral fat. There is a popular saying that abs are made in the kitchen, not the gym. While six packs may not be everybody's goal, a healthy waistline should be. Think of it as an investment. Every healthy meal, every walk, every night of good sleep is a deposit in your body's bank account. And the returns are long life and fewer health problems. Beyond personal choices, this is also now a social issue. Our overall urban design discourages walking, encourages long working hours and easy access to fast food. All of these are contributing to India's growing belly problem. And in this podcast with renowned obesity surgeon, Dr. Pankaj Khandelwal, we have discussed a lot of points which you can take to ensure that you and your family can remain healthy as far as weight is concerned.